This will be another good week again to you. <laughs> I had to do my last video for the day. And so this will be a study on, um, ah, pardon me. This will be a study on um, Galatians 5 verse 23. I've seen this verse so many times butchered. <laughs> Boy, destroyed, distorted. So much, it kills me so. Galatians chapter 5 verse 23. Uh, Galatians, Ephesians. Galatians is after 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Uh, what is it? Acts, Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, Galatians. Uh, so Galatians chapter 5 verse 23. The infamous, um, skipping ahead, where it says, against such, against, so being against, against such, there is no law. There is no law. That in itself should uh, make clear what it is that's going on. Um, but if it's not, let me share this with you. Well... This is dealing with the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5, verse 15 through 23. Um, you, you see the fruits of the Spirit. And also verse 24 through 26 is also important um, in understanding it. So, so what does that mean? Against such there is no law. So this understanding this phrase will help us to understand... Truly and the more certain are uh, the fruits of the Spirit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Okay, well, let's see. This is a fun study on sharing the, how you say, the, 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 the I don't know how to say it, the many angles of the law of God and what the law of God provides from us by the Holy Spirit. Now, Romans 8 verse 1 through 2 calls it, the law of the spirit of life. So it's the law of life. It's the law of the spirit. It's the law of Christ. The law of the spirit of life in and by Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So the law frees us from the law? No. <laughs> uh, the law of the spirit of life frees us from sin and death. This experience of sin and death with uh, that same law that we had. That we're made free. That law of liberty. It sets us free. Uh, James calls it the law of liberty. Also, the perfect law of liberty even. Um, uh, John calls it in John 8. What is it? John 8, 32 or verse 23. I forget. Verse 32 or verse 33 it says, You will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So the word of God has a salvific potential within it. The law of God has a salvific potential in it when it's received in our hearts, when the word is received in our hearts, when the law is received in our hearts. Now, let me get straight to the study. So understanding the phrase in Galatians 5 verse 23 uh, connected to the, to, to the fruits of the spirit, the list of the, the listing of the fruits, the fruits of the spirit, where in chapter 5 verse 23 says against such being against speaking of the fruits of the spirit against such of these things against such there is no law there is no law that's against these things I'll, i already answered this quickly uh, in that way saying that the law is not against the fruits of the spirit uh, it shouldn't be uh, if it is that means you're you're misinterpreting the law and you're devouring one another you're uh, going to law against the brother and you're forgetting that the law says you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. James gets into that. He says, if you judge evil against the law, you're judging evil against your brother. It's true interpretation of the law of God it teaches us to love our brother. It teaches us even mercy. It teaches us even, yes, justice, but we have mercy and we have faith. Individual faith and the faith community. Um, faith of the community, faith of the church, the collective. All right, well, pardon me. Against such, there is no law. 
many Christians, they'll want to jump on that and then they'll say, there is no law because we have the fruits of the Spirit. They'll say something like that. Let me see if I can get the language correctly. Did I say it right? The way how they see it. Uh, because we have the fruits of the Spirit, they come to verse 23 and they say, because we have the fruits of the Spirit, there's no law. There's no law. But no, I already explained to you what it really is saying. And to make it the more clearly evident, let's proceed with this study. O Lord, lead us unto all truth. Guide us. Be with us. May we understand your law because it's close to your heart. And it should be close to our heart. For you said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So let us understand it without further ado. Amen. So, quickly. Well, right there in verse... I, to, to explain this to you, verse 16, he says that all these things are in the Spirit. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So all these things that he's talking about are things that are in the Spirit. Um, well, all these things that are in the Spirit are of the law of life. I already mention Romans 8 verse 1 through 2 the law of the spirit the law of life the law of Christ um well uh, and it's that same law that the Holy Spirit puts into our heart that law of love that law of life well to reveal this simply to you I'm going to go through each of the fruits of the Spirit, and I'm going to prove it to you how that the law of God is equated to each of these fruits of the spirit because the law isn't against these things and the fruits of the spirit is not the fruits of the spirit is not against the law but they are one and the same it's the same offer they're one and the same a law of love a law of life so then of each of these attributes uh which each of these fruits which each of these attributes each of these um fruits of the spirit i'm going to show you a parallel scripture where it says that the law does the same thing that the law from the law is derived the same thing that the law produces the same thing well let's see uh verse 22 the first fruits of the spirit is love but the fruit of the spirit is love okay so does the law give us love oh well, that's easy just go up to verse 14 Verse 14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, dot, 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 love, love. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So the law teaches us love. So law, all the law is fulfilled in one word, love, dot, 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 love. I don't know, I should have said. Okay, continuing. Um... Next fruit to the Spirit, verse 22, still joy. The fruit of the Spirit is joy also. Um, turn with me to Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. It's going to get better and better, saints, friends. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. What does it say? We already saw that the law is love. Is the law joy? Let's see, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. What does it say? Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. But happy is he who keeps the law. Happy, another alternate translation, it can say blessed. Another translation, it would say joyful is he. So happy, blessed, joyful is he who keeps the law. Very beautiful. Another, another attribute, another fruit to the Spirit is peace. So from love to joy, now we're going to peace. In verse 22 is peace. Let's go to Psalms. Does the law give us peace? Let's go to Psalms 119, verse 165. Let's go to it. Psalms 119, verse 165. I love this. Psalms 119 verse 165, it says, Great peace, great peace have those who love your law, and nothing causes them to stumble. So the law 
Tied unto the law, it gives us peace. The law gives us peace. In Psalms 119, verse 165. The next fruit of the Spirit, long-suffering. We went from love to joy to peace. Now we're at long-suffering. And so I point you to this. This one is nice, too. I point you to this. We already saw, note this, we already saw if the law equals love, we saw the first fruit of the Spirit is love, and the law is of love uh, in Galatians 5.14. In one word, love. Um, if the law is of love, guess what? Uh, also, by extension of the law being love, the law being equal to love, see 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter. And in 1 Corinthians 13, it says that love is, is long suffering so love equals long suffering and so let me turn there to you love equaling long suffering then therefore psalms chapter 119 verse 136 let me try to move quickly i'm going to turn here for you psalms chapter 119 verse 136 so the what was it again if we already saw for the fruits of the spirit for long suffering Proving that the law is long is of long long suffering gives us long suffering. If the law equals love, we saw that already in Galatians five fourteen. The first fruit of the spirit in verse twenty two is love. Galatians five fourteen. Law is of love. If law equals love, then see that love in First Corinthians chapter thirteen in the love chapter love equals long suffering. So the law so then the law equals love equals long suffering a long suffering love so then see Psalms 119 verse 136 let's see long suffering displayed one Psalms 119 verse 136 I love this scripture Psalms 119 verse 136 it says David he says Rivers of water run down from my eyes because, why? Because men do not keep your law. So David, he had that long suffering. He was in sorrow. He was in crying. He was suffering. And, and it built up a compassion or, or, a, a, or a, a sorrow within him, a godly sorrow within him. And... It was over and over and over. He was afflicted with this sorrow and he was just bearing it because men were not keeping the law of God. And so in that sense, in that way, the law, it does, it is of long suffering, the law of long suffering. So then the next fruit to the spirit, Galatians 5 verse 22 is kindness we already saw love. The fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Next one is kindness. And I love this one. I love this one. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 31, verse 26. And what is it called here? Proverbs chapter 31, verse 26. What does it say? Speaking of the virtuous woman in chapter 31... Uh, speaking of the virtuous woman, it says, She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. The law of kindness. So the law is of kindness. The law is kindness. So, again, we're seeing that God's law is not against the fruits of the Spirit. God's law is the of the fruits of the Spirit is of the spirit is of god's fruits <laughs> of each of the the fruits of the spirit um, another scripture is galatians chapter 6 verse 2 let me see that galatians chapter 6 verse 2 so the law of kindness galatians chapter 6 verse 2 It says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. When you bear another person's burden, you're fulfilling, you're, you're performing, 
you're doing the law of Christ and so that's that law of kindness that that virtuous woman that virtuous wife had in Proverbs 31 she had that law of kindness to speak up for the poor to speak up for uh, the afflicted to speak up for the sorrow the one sorrowing and to bring kindness to them uh, and contrarily uh, to um, compared to the the harlot a uh, woman in the earlier verses who causes who wants the king to drink uh, alcoholic wine uh, so that uh, people will forget the law. Uh, the harlot woman in Proverbs 31, she wants you to forget the law, but the virtuous woman, the pure woman with a pure grape juice, she wants with the pure vintage, the pure grape juice, she wants you to keep the law, to remember the law. On her tongue is the law of kindness. So, uh, continuing, uh, the next fruit of the Spirit is goodness. We already saw love, joy, peace, long-suffering, um, long-suffering, um, kindness. Next one is goodness. Galatians 5.22, the fruits of the Spirit, goodness. Well, go to Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Quite simply. <laughs> I could have went to many other places with this. Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Therefore the law is holy and the commandments holy and just and good. So the law and the commandments, it is holy, just and good. Goodness is taught by the law. The law is good. The next fruit to the spirit, Galatians 5 verse 22 still. It's faithfulness. Well, Matthew 23 verse 23. The law is of faith. What does it teach us there? Where Jesus said, he scribes and, he fair, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. He said, you do this, but the weightier matters of the law. The weightier matters of the law. Let me turn there. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. That means sinners. That means liars, even. Uh, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, ju which are, which is what, um, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. These are the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. So faith, faith. So the law of God teaches us faith. Also justice and mercy, but faith. The law teaches us faith. Matthew 23, verse 23. Another scripture, Romans 10, verse 17. It says, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And so the word of God and the law of God, when we hear that, it should inspire faith. It should give us faith. Hearing anything of the word of God or the law of God, uh, it should inspire with, with us faith. So the law is of faith. Uh, next fruit to the spirits in Galatians 5 verse 23. Now we're in verse 23. Um, it's gentleness. Gentleness or meekness. An alternate translation. Gentleness or meekness. You'll have to forgive me. That's the only one. Only one I have not yet found. But it doesn't mean there's not one in the law of God. <laughs> okay. But continuing then to the next fruit to the spirit. So gentleness and meekness, if you can find it, tell me. <laughs> I'll add it to my notes, and I might, I, if I'm able to, I'll input it in this video. Um, verse 23, Galatians 5, verse 23 again. Uh, the next fruit of the Spirit, self-control. Self-control. Does the law of God teach us self-control? Uh, turn with me to Hosea, chapter 4, verse 1 through 3. It's after the, the book of Daniel. You got Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel. Pardon me, I'm running out of breath. <laughs> Trying to make a short video for you. The book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 1 through 3. Hosea, chapter 4, verse 1 through 3. Ah, boo. And it says this, hear the word of the Lord, 
Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord brings a charge against the inhabitants of the land. There is no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land by swearing, by swearing and lying, killing and stealing and committing adultery. They break all restraint. They break all restraint. Because all of these things are of the law of God, he mentioned uh, swearing, lying. Swearing is the third commandment in the Ten Commandments. So you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Uh, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Uh, lying, uh, that's the ninth commandment. Uh, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Killing, uh, sixth commandment. You shall not murder. Stealing. Uh, the eighth commandment, you shall not steal. And committing adultery, the seventh commandment, you shall not commit adultery. Uh, because they're breaking each of these things, of these requirements of God's law, to also, and that that's synonymous with them breaking all restraint. The law of God, when it says you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not swear, or take the name of the Lord your God in vain, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not lie, in other words. Um, it's saying they break, they're breaking all restraint. Meaning, uh, they, break, they break all restraint with bloodshed upon bloodshed. Meaning... Meaning, what? Verse 6, why? Because you have forgotten the law of your God. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. That knowledge that he was speaking of in verse 1 that we read already. Verse 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. What is knowledge? Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you from being priests for me. Why? What is knowledge? Because you have forgotten the law of your God. I will also forget your children. Because you have forgotten the law of your God. So, the law of God, it te should teach us restraint. It should restrain us. It should um, teach us, therefore, self-control. Um, there's another scripture. There's another scripture. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Where the word restraint is used uh, in the context of the law of God. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Turn with me there. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. It says this, Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. But happy is he who keeps the law. We looked at this early. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. But the opposite of that is, um, guess what? Happy is he who keeps the law. So again, the law is in the context of us having a restraint. We should have a restraint, but those who don't have revelation, they cast it off. They cast off all restraint. Uh, revelation or prophetic vision, they cast off all restraint. So, the law is what we need to, to be restrained, to have self-control. Even in this sense, to be protected uh, the law guards us. It guards us. It protects us. It uh, restrains us. And it get, teaches us self-control. How does it protect us? Uh, if somebody loses all, they break all restraint. That means they break all restraints of the law. That means they're out. They're going to do whatever they want to do. Uh, that means they're going to uh, commit adultery. They're going to steal your wife. They're going to steal your your car. They're going to murder you Therefore the law not only does it teach you self-control in of yourself So you put your 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 restrained your you, the, the flesh is restrained your your you guard yourself by holding the, the law of God in your heart it, it being your meditation not only does it protect you but excuse me, but also uh, the law protects you from other people 
killing you or stealing from you or lying to you or so on and so forth. So it restrains you and it restrains others uh, to protect you and to protect you again from others. <laughs> so the law teaches us self-control. So, therefore, we've been through all the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, therefore, our only one that, that we didn't have was gentleness and meekness. But therefore, uh, maybe I'll, I'll end with this. Um, it was said of Moses that he was meek. Um, he was meek or a humble man. And he's the man of law. He's the man of, of the Ten Commandments of the law of Moses, the law of God, the Torah. And he was... Described as the humblest man on earth or the meekest man on earth. And so that man of law, he was meek. He was gentle even. Uh, gentleness. Gentleness and the alternate translation is meekness. So gentleness and meekness. Uh, Moses, he was gentle and he was meek. He was meek. And as Jesus said, the meek shall inherit the earth. And so that man of law... I'll, I'll add that to the notes. Moses in his meekness, the man of law, was the meekest man, the most humblest man on the earth. And so, praise the Lord. So, all of these fruits of the Spirit, all of these uh, attributes of the Spirit, called fruits, that we've been through, love, joy, peace, all, all, all the list of them, we can conclude this. This is, this is the... This is the conclusion. So when Galatian means against such, against such as these things mentioned here, you turn to Galatians 5, what is it, Galatians 5 verse 23 where it says against such, against such, we read against such as these things mentioned here, and then dot dot dot, there is no law against them, there is no law against them, therefore, so against such as you can you can retranslate um, Galatians like that against such as these all caps against such as these things mentioned here dot 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 there is no law against them there's no law against them ah yet why why do you brethren you keep fighting against these fruitful things of the spirit of love. Oh, and this is what Paul is intimating in this very message. Why do you this is the context why why he's speaking this message in the fruits of the spirit in the fruits of the spirit in Galatians 5. He says it's he's he he mentions all of these things and he says, you know, against such there is no law, but why are you brethren um it's as if he's saying, why are you brethren uh, still continuing and, and, and you keep on fighting against these fruitful things of the spirits of love? These fruitful things of the spirit of love. That's very well what he's uh, intimating uh, towards the people who he's he's writing to and ministering to. Uh, you know, they keep arguing there's a whole bunch of arguing in the New Testament, arguing against one another and promoting strife and envy, all by judging wrongly. They're, they're judging wrongly by going to law against the brother, falsely, for reasons of pride, of the pride of your own heart. Paul is speaking to them. This is this is me, me, um, as if putting it putting it in my own words to the experience of what Paul is really trying to say. You keep arguing against one another, promoting strife and envy, all by judging wrongly, by going to law against the brother falsely for reasons of pride, of, of, of the pride of your own heart. But against the fruits of love, there is no law you can find. He's saying you you may go be able to go to the law and try to nitpick and, and incorrectly uh, interpret the law and try to bash this person and this person and this person. Uh, but guess what? Against the fruits of love, there is no law you can find. I can guarantee that to you. And Paul was trying to relay that message uh, to, to the church, to the New Testament church. 
He's, he's saying as if you wouldn't be able to find one because the entirety of God's law, God's law is love, love. And so he says that in Galatians 5 verse 14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love, you shall love. And so that's the context. Love your neighbors, uh, family, love God's law, love his word, love the Lord um, and love one another and this is all we can do. There's there's nothing that can come against this. This is the, the message of the gospel. There's nothing that can come against this. And so to fully the more appreciate it, see it in his word, be able to find it in his word, be able to find it in his law. Love, 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 love. And I share this with you uh in this in this way, uh through the fruits of the spirit, how God's law it's perfectly equated unto the fruits of the Spirit. And so, it's beautiful. Amen. <laughs> it's a good and it's a perfect gift. Amen. You be blessed. Peace.